Live from CBS4, this is your News Now. Now at 6, an accused cop killer learns he won't spend the rest of his life behind bars. Why the Southport police chief says he's frustrated by that judge's decision. Redefining the penalties for rape in Indiana, the changes that state lawmakers are proposing to change a law that has not been updated in decades. Well, tonight, seven people are facing criminal charges following a series of armed robberies. The suspects, all under the age of 20, are accused of targeting cell phone stores across the metro area. Mm -hmm. CBS 4's Jesse Wells has the very latest on the investigation. The last in the series of robberies took place at this AT&T store. By that point, police had put the suspects under surveillance, and five men were arrested as they tried to flee. Luckily, police say no one was seriously hurt during any of the crimes. Storming into cell phone stores with guns drawn, often forcing customers and employees onto the floor, police claim seven men began robbing cell phone stores in November and December of last year. In at least one robbery, a gun was allegedly pointed at a two-year-old child, a terrifying and potentially deadly act of violence. Common sense to tell you, uh, when people go into stores with guns and robbing people, uh, there could be such a volatile ending that could occur. Following a robbery in Fishers, police claim the suspects robbed this AT&T store on Southport Road, followed by a Verizon store on Kessler Boulevard, a T-Mobile on West 38th, another AT&T store on South Emerson, and several more. This 42-page affidavit claims the suspects, who range in age from 16 to 19 years old, were connected to at least nine robberies. Court records claim the suspects focused on stealing iPhones, often walking away with large bags of phones valued at tens of thousands of dollars. It's good work. At the end of the day, it's good police work and the fact that we were able to uh, get these individuals off the streets. While six of the seven suspects have been arrested, 19-year-old Damara Bryant is still wanted on an active warrant. Police are asking for the public's help locating Bryant. Police also hope the case serves as a warning to other potential thieves. The big picture is this, is that uh, we will find you, we will catch you, and we will hold you accountable uh, to the extent of the law. And so at the end of the day, we ask that you don't do it. Finally, all seven suspects, including the three juveniles, are facing charges in adult court. Jesse Wells, CBS 4 News. Jesse, thank you. Developing tonight, a judge is ruling an Indiana man will not spend the rest of his life in prison despite being charged with killing a Southport officer in 2017. CBS 4's Mike Sullivan is live now at the Southport Police Department right now and has the latest on the new developments. Mike. We are here at the Southport Police Department where, as you can imagine, Motions are running high today given this latest news. A lot of these officers served with Lieutenant Aaron Allen. And this is a complicated case. Both sides believe they had a plea agreement in place until a judge ruled against it. Lieutenant Aaron Allen was shot and killed while responding to an overturned vehicle in 2017. Body camera footage shows Jason Brown pulling out a gun and firing. Lieutenant Allen was shot 11 times while trying to render aid. In December, Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Mears agreed to drop the death penalty if Brown waived his rights to a jury trial. Southport Police Chief Tom Vaughn says there were concerns that a jury trial would be live streamed due to COVID rules. Allen's family was fearful the body camera footage would be shown to the world. Instead, the agreement was supposed to see Brown face life in prison without parole. Today, a judge ruled against it. He can, he can get 45 to 65 years. And so let's say he gets 45 years, he has to do 75%. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be out in the 60s, and he murdered a police officer, and you can't say any different. He shot at him 18 times. Chief Ryan Vaughn says Brown's legal team argued that Brown had a seizure prior to the shooting and was not in a clear mental state. Chief Vaughn went on to say that other doctors testified during the trial, saying that despite these medical issues, he would not have been incoherent. In Southport, I'm Mike Sullivan, CBS 4 News. IMPD continues investigating the homicide of a two-month-old baby on the east side. This is the second two-month-old baby to be killed in the city in the last two weeks. Police say they were called to Timber Ridge Drive last week where a baby was unresponsive and not breathing. The child died Wednesday and the coroner's office says the cause of death was blunt force trauma. Before that infant's death, another two-month-old baby, Kamara Sutton, died with non-accidental injuries in January. Experts say, generally speaking, before people get frustrated with a child, they should have a plan in place to prevent a tragedy from happening.
whether you're a parent, babysitter, school official, whatever, but there are times that you may just need to walk away. Put your child in the crib where they're safe. Walk away, take a minute, take a breath. Experts advise those around children to know their triggers, take deep breaths when they're frustrated, and have a person to call f if you need help. We have a list of important resources over on our website, cbs4indy.com. Indiana lawmakers are moving forward with a bill to close a loophole in the state rape law. That bill passed the House on an almost unanimous vote, and we've learned it will be heard by the Senate committee next week. CBS4's Kristen Eskow spoke with a sexual assault survivor who believes that it could help others get justice. As a survivor, you don't get that many days of celebration. Emma Walker has been a survivor since 2014 when she was raped in a college fraternity house. She looked into pressing criminal charges, but legal experts told her she might not get a conviction. I couldn't realistically go through that process to then potentially be told at the end he gets to walk free. Walker believes a proposal at the state house could change that outcome for other survivors. It would specify rape includes situations when there's a lack of consent. One in five women in the state of Indiana will experience sexual assault in their lifetime. One in five. It's unacceptable and it needs to change. State Representative Sharon Nagel, who wrote the bill, says many other states have already updated their definitions of rape. Our law actually hasn't been changed since the 1800s in our rape statute. Although the bill passed the House with almost unanimous support, some Hoosiers have concerns. Bernice Corley of the Indiana Public Defender Council argues it's not necessary. Since 1884, Indiana law has already recognized that there can be rape by fraud or deceit and that there's no need to prove violence. What we do know is that case law supports everything that we're trying to accomplish. Today, Emma Walker uses her experience to help others through her work at the YWCA of Northeast Indiana. She says she hopes lawmakers continue to advance the bill so more survivors can get justice. I really think we need to take what I consider a national epidemic of sexual assault and start to address it. From the Indiana State House, Kristen Eskow, CBS 4 News. Kristen, thank you. The committee hearing on that bill is planned for Tuesday. If the bill gets passed in committee, it would then head to the Senate floor. More reaction pours in tonight in the aftermath of that viral video showing a Purdue student being arrested by a Purdue police officer. We've been reporting about the claims into excessive force in this video, showing Adonis Tuggle being restrained by an officer. PUPD says it was responding to a domestic disturbance. Things escalated as the officer puts his arm apparently on Tuggle's neck. In the video, Tuggle repeatedly says the officer was choking him. Well, last night, Purdue's Black Student Union held a student town hall calling for changes in the fallout from that arrest. Tonight, the state representative from West Lafayette is speaking about the excessive force allegations and what he hopes to see happen to the officer involved. Maybe we need to look at how long police officers are trained. Are they getting enough training, de-escalation training? I would also like to see change because um, even though we've asked for, for changes um, by uh, House Bill 1006, I don't know that we're really seeing significant change. Purdue's police chief says the officer involved was wearing a body camera and that it will be released once the internal investigation is finished. An external review of the incident by the Indiana State Police will be done as well. Well, license plate cameras are popping up more and more across central Indiana. Law enforcement agencies say, say they are becoming an invaluable part of modern police work. The Hancock County Sheriff's Office now has 22 cameras after recently getting six more. The cameras take pictures of license plates and can alert police if a vehicle is stolen or missing. Just this week, a man was arrested actually in Columbus when a camera flagged the car he was driving as stolen. Police say these cameras are an extra set of eyes for officers. I'm looking for the criminals. I'm looking for people that's entering this county. It's my responsibility as sheriff to make sure this county's safe. And if that technology helps make me do that, then I'm going to use it to, to help. Now, some privacy concerns have been raised about the cameras, but the agencies we spoke with said today that if people aren't committing crimes, they have nothing to worry about. Well, ahead of Sunday's Super Bowl, police are warning drivers to make the right call and avoid driving under the influence. The warning does come after a pedestrian was hit and killed just last night at 36th and Keystone on the near northeast side. Police say that James Flowers faces preliminary charges now of operating while intoxicated, causing death and driving while suspended. 
Police are reminding Hoosiers that it only takes a split second for the worst to happen. You can be involved in a fatal accident and therefore be looking at jail time. You get arrested by the Indiana State Police or another law enforcement agency here in the state of Indiana, automatically that's going to cost you anywhere between five to $10,000 um, as far as lawyer fees, insurance rates, uh, possibly losing your job, depending upon what type of job you have. ISP and IMPD say they'll be doing extra patrols throughout Super Bowl weekend. If you plan to drink, police say to have a game plan to either stay where you are, get a designated driver, or use a rideshare service. Next at 6, a push for a four-time NFL MVP to make his new home right here in the Hoosier State, Why a local attorney is hoping to show Aaron Rodgers that Indy wants him to lead the team. And we've got rain moving out of the state right now. May see a rain-snow mix changing over to snow overnight, but there's also a warm-up on the way. We'll have your forecast coming up after the break. The monster is back. It's hungry, and it's coming for you. We're in the world now. We have to earn everything. You can correct. see the exhaustion on truck. everybody. I want to push myself to the limit. I'm not here to be the sole survivor. This game is so, so hard. What did I get myself into? Are you struggling with erectile dysfunction? Well, you may not have to take pills any longer. There is now a breakthrough technology that can eliminate ED. I'm joined now by Andrew to tell us all about it. Nisha, we use the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, which is shown to open up blood vessels and improve circulation. We've helped so many couples restore normal intimacy without the pills. Andrew, what kinds of clinical studies have been performed on your technology? There are over 45 clinical studies. Even Cambridge University showed our treatments to be effective. One study called it the new standard of care for erectile dysfunction. If you are struggling with erectile dysfunction and want to turn back the clock in the bedroom, take advantage of this special offer and get your love life back. Put a stop to your erectile dysfunction. Call Pine Grove Medical Clinic. You'll get the initial assessment and blood flow ultrasound free and a special gift proven to produce powerful results in the bedroom. A $650 value free to those that call right now. 317-552-1111. Are you looking for a better night's sleep? Visit your nearest Long's mattress location and experience the Long's difference. We proudly offer the complete line of Bulls mattresses, including the luxurious West Baden collection, all made right here in Indiana. These are great beds that cost way less than those overpriced national brands. And you'll love our no-pressure, highly trained staff. They'll make sure you find a new mattress that's perfect for your needs and budget. Visit any of our Indy locations, including our new store on Whitestone Parkway. Long's mattress, everyday low prices, everyday honesty. They remind us of the wonder of living and the power of quiet moments that put life into focus. The mountains are calling. Plan your next memory at Gatlinburg.com. Well, today, Mayor Joe Hogsett traveled to the northeast side to promote a business working to solve food insecurity. African Market is a SNAP certified grocery store on 38th Street that provides African and Caribbean foods and produce. The store is notable because it's located in a food desert where access to fresh foods are often limited or non-existent. The city is connecting African Market with minority owned farms to make sure residents can get the items they need to live a healthy lifestyle. The African Market is representative of smaller markets that the city of Indianapolis is trying to help promote and uplift. We have an obligation to be a welcoming city by providing access to cuisine uh, and to tradition, cultural traditions. Um, that are now represented in the city. The city is going to direct $6 million in American Rescue Plan funding to go towards food access issues 
over the next three years. And that is a good thing. Yes, very good. Let's talk about this weekend. Uh, you better bundle yes. up, everybody. Chris is saying it is just going to be yeah. It was pretty warm out. outside today <laughs> yeah, for the most weekend. part, but those temperatures yeah. are really going to plunge, Chris. Yeah, we've got another cold front that's going to make its way across the state tonight and bring that change our way. One cold front's moved on through. We had rain associated with that. When the next one moves on through with the colder air, we'll see the possibility of a rain-snow mix changing over to snow before ending overnight. I think this is all going to take place overnight, and that colder air will be there to greet you first thing tomorrow morning. Now, in terms of the winds back behind the front, they'll shift coming in from the northwest. That colder flow of air is going to keep our high temperature only in the 20s over the weekend. Picked up a tenth of an inch of rain so far today here in the state capitol. Over a half inch of rain came down in Lafayette today, and we still saw the high temperature make it up to 45 before that cold front moved on through. 48 for the high temperature in Columbus and in Bloomington. Right now, we've got temperatures cooling down into the 30s. Still at 40 at Bloomington, but 36 at Kokomo, 38 at Lafayette here in the city, and also 38 for the current temperature in Muncie. That rainfall we had today now puts us just shy of two inches of rain for the month. So February has been off to a fairly wet start for us. So far this year, only two completely dry weekends, and I don't think this weekend is going to be a completely dry one. We'll see a chance for some snow showers out there, and it's going to be a cold weekend. The high temperature in the middle 20s on Saturday and Sunday, warming up to 34 on Monday, finally getting back into the 40s coming up on Tuesday with a high at 47. Overnight will cool down to 19 in Kokomo, 20 in Lafayette and Richmond, and down to 21 for the overnight low in Columbus. Expect a cloudy weekend out there, some gusty winds tomorrow, and a few flurries during the day. Nothing that should stick to the streets tomorrow afternoon. We'll find the temperature in the middle 20s with a northwest wind around 15 miles per hour. Then for Sunday, we'll see snow showers, especially in the afternoon, on through the evening across central Indiana, and that be, may be enough snow on Sunday to cover the ground. Also chilly for the second half of the weekend. We'll keep the high temperature in the middle 20s coming up on Sunday with a northwest wind at 10 miles per hour. After a chilly weekend, we got a welcome warm up coming our way on Valentine's Day, a mix of clouds and sun, the high at 34, then warmer on Tuesday with a high at 47. We'll spend a couple of days with temperatures near 60 coming up on Wednesday and Thursday. Dry on Wednesday, rain and thunderstorms on Thursday. Cold front's going to move across central Indiana late Thursday into Friday, and Friday back in the chill once again with snow. No showers around. We'll see the high only at 34. This is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, he's probably got three or four years left, I would say. Um, and I would hope that those three years can, three or four years, can come to Indy and get us to where we want to be. Well, as we get ready to watch the Super Bowl this weekend, a new campaign is hoping to wrestle NFL superstar quarterback Aaron Rodgers from cold Wisconsin to slightly less cold Indiana. <laughs> well, a local attorney is hoping his pitch for the Colts and Rodgers could help bring the Lombardi Trophy back to the Circle City. CBS4's Eric Graves tells us about hashtag Indy wants Rodgers. If you drive past the fairgrounds, you might have already noticed. New digital billboard with the words hashtag Indy wants Rogers and a Colts jersey with four time NFL MVP quarterback Aaron Rodgers' name on the back of it. Carmel attorney Joseph Wade is behind the ad. You know, I'm an avid Colts fan, so wanted to make our play towards Aaron Rodgers. He's hoping to grab Rodgers and the Colts' attention to try and make the move happen. What better way to do that than to see if we can make something go viral and get his attention? It's a bit of a long shot. Rodgers is still under contract with the Green Bay Packers for another year, but disagreements and drama last offseason fueled trade rumors, making fans wonder if it's possible Rodgers requests a trade this offseason. I think Aaron really puts us in a position where we could probably even win the Super Bowl. Wade isn't so much anti Carson Wentz, but just wants the best player possible under center for the Colts. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Other Colts fans aren't as sure. It'd be a heck of a gamble. It really would. Randy Collins is a Colts super fan. Just check out his basement. He's the founder of the Indy Blue Crew Fan Club. Carson's a decent quarterback. Uh, you know, like I say, he, he made some plays last year were unbelievable, but then again, towards the end of the year, he missed some layups. Whether it happens or not, it's certainly been an attention getter. Wade says he's got about 100 calls just in the first 24 hours of the billboard being up. I turned my phone off, cell phone off yesterday because social media messages were going nuts too. There have been mixed reviews. This is a terrible idea or uh, they hate me. And then a lot of people calling saying, hey, this is awesome. We'd love to have Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers has been a controversial player over the past year when it comes to COVID-19 and vaccines. But Wade says this is all about For football. Us, it's just we want a good quarterback in Indy to take us where we want to be. 
Reporting in Indianapolis, Eric Graves, CBS4 News. Eric, thank you. During his acceptance speech for the MVP award last night, Rogers told reporters he will make a decision in the near future. So, Colts fans, we're going to wait and see if anything actually happens. Chris, I don't know what, I don't know what you think. I, I say no, but I don't know. Max, he's the best quarterback out there. I yeah. think if the Colts can get him, go for it. Yeah, let's do it. He can push him over the top. All right, it's time to talk basketball. The Pacers reboot kicks into high gear tonight at the Fieldhouse. We'll get our first look at an overhauled roster when Indiana meets Cleveland. The former King trio of Halliburton, Heald, and Thompson sounds like a law firm. They're excited and ready for a fresh start with the blue and gold. We're in it together. Obviously, me being the, the, the older bro, you know, I'm going to be there for Tyrese and help him continue this transition. And then with Buddy, you know, he's, a, he's like our middle child. You know, we all love each other, and I want, you know, I want the best for them. So however I can help them continue to get better, I'm here to do that. New opportunity, ready to get to work. Uh, you know, this, I mean, Indiana's a great state. Basketball state, uh, fans are, are fun to be around. I've been here a lot of times, and I see how passionate about that basketball. So um, I'm excited to be here. Fans are amazing. They love hoops. They know basketball. This is a basketball state, so um, I love it. I love it, too. Five Pacers were sent packing. Four new faces will replace them, but having three draft picks in the top 35 this summer will give Kevin Pritchard a chance to add quality to the remade roster. The Pacers president made getting Tyrese Halliburton the cornerstone deal. We really feel like when we put the ball more in... Um, Tyrese's hands that he can really blossom into something special at 21 years old. You know, for me, when you get those kind of guys, it's like getting the Peytons and the Andrew Lux. It's going to be great building around him. Oh, sounds good. To the Big Ten now, where the Indiana Hoosiers head down the home stretch with one thing in mind getting back to the NCAA tournament. The resume isn't great right now, but the next few games will tell the tale. IU visits Michigan State tomorrow, then will host Wisconsin before traveling to Ohio State. Getting a win or two in this stretch, and they're in great shape. You know, we got seven games left. We can basically control our own destiny. You know, I mean, we got to we, we gotta win out. It's kind of how I look at it. Um, starting at Michigan State, again, I think our team can beat any team in the Big Ten if we commit ourselves. Um, I mean, the Big Ten has kind of shown that this season. Well, Hoosier fans know the last time they made the tournament, way back in 2016. The time is now. Max, back to you. All right, go Hoosiers. Thank you, Chris. Well, here's a look at what's coming up tonight on Dan Abrams Live and Banfield. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. Fans behaving badly, why sports fans are duking it out in the stands and what the NFL can do to break it up and some of the most insane prop bets being placed for the big game. Now here's Ashley with a look at Banfield. Thanks, Dan. Tonight on Banfield, once a daytime television powerhouse, Wendy Williams' bankers are now worried about both her and her money. Find out who they're trying to lock out of her accounts. Plus, I love you, now pay me. The alarming numbers just released on how many scammers broke the bank and broke the heart. That's tonight on Banfield on News Nation. And those shows all air on News Nation channel. Check your local listings to find the channel for your provider.
Well, a top official from the Environmental Protection Agency made a stop in the Circle City tonight. Deputy Administrator Janet McCabe toured the Recycle Force plant. That's on the Near East side. The nonprofit works to reduce crime through employment and job training opportunities while improving the environment by recycling electronics. All right, Chris, turning to our weather, people might need to bundle up and maybe drive a little slower tonight, actually. Yeah, we're going to see some icy spots across central Indiana after midnight with the rain-snow mix changing over to snow. Then a chill in the air for the weekend with flurries and snow showers, highs in the middle 20s over the weekend, and the 30s on Valentine's Day, and then warmer next week. By next Wednesday and Thursday, we'll see high temperatures near 60 with a chance of rain by Thursday. All right, Chris, thank you for joining us tonight on CBS 4 News at 6. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell is next. And we're back at 11 o'clock. Until then, have a great night.